It's still tough to pick a winner. Oh. That was a quick game. That's, uh, that break was so good. <laughs> it's causing the sound effects. There so we go. Our first nil-nil draw in the ultimate <laughs> Paul Pairs Cup. A few giggles out there, but Kyron's made a ball, his first successful break of the night. Good stay enjoyed himself there. But anyway, Scotch Frame and Ian and Kyron are at the table. And this is a very, very gettable chance. Set, set to you just in the break there off air, Simon. It just felt like in that match, Karen Ian just had to work really hard on, on frames where they didn't actually get first opportunity. And you always feel that if you come to the table after someone's made a mistake, you're almost due a slightly easier clearance. But there was never anything super simple for them. Yeah, always one problem or something to work out. And they played some good shots there and, and a couple of times weren't able to get out, or out of the frame off the back of them. First shot here just made things a little bit awkward in the bottom half. Oh, that yellow wants to pull up. I was about to make the point that that red still goes, and it does. Yeah, I think Kyron likes it. So there's your pattern. Top right, bottom right, middle left, eight ball waiting. The thing is, if you're in, hey, you want someone to land you on a ball. Well, I think actually Kyron's gone a little bit off straight the wrong way. I, I think if he'd had a turn further to the right, as we look, yeah, he could have definitely done with being a turn further to the right. So it might have to be the double now. Never in doubt. Never in doubt. One nil to Wilson and Hay. Great experience for these two boys. Aside from obviously the, the whole snooker thing, it's obviously it's obviously great to have Karen play with us. But just on a human side of things, these lads have known each other for forever, two decades now, been really close mates. Fantastic experience for them both. Oh, it's, it's absolutely brilliant. It really is, and yeah, it's brilliant. They also bring a lot of attention as well, which is great. And nice to see them put together that sort of finish to start this match off as well. Because as you say, they, it was a tough opening match for them. That what they had, the work they had to do was tricky. Front ball breaking. It's not always his method of choice. But uh, dry he is. He got hold of them all right, but this, this at first glance has come out pretty messy. Yeah, he just came across it a little bit. I mean, it is still a very powerful break. But it is not a nice layout. So you'd make a player like Sean, who's very sort of tactically sound and very clever, oh, especially now. Big favourite. That didn't quite reach the cushion for me in hate. Must hit a cushion after contact with every single shot. This can't have been far away. He must. Have, I, th I reckon he thought he can't fail to hit a cushion here. Yeah, just trying to be too careful, really. Just roll up there and don't give away the foul, and you're all good. Key shot for Sean straight away. This is all about breaking out the red on the top cushion. The rest of the reds are, are really nice. And that red hasn't come out for him. It's a tough one to go into now as well. Really isn't easy. It's not really not too easy. The next shot. Is he going to look at. Is the left middle pocket a big pocket here? No, I think he's half tempted to have tried to play some sort of uh, containing shot while bumping the red out here. I don't believe, if he's looking at one at the top, I don't believe he's thinking aggressive. You could make a case for a double right centre, but it's all that. It's a, it's a very aggressive play. I think he can just bump this and leave nothing on. No, he has gone for the double. That was all out. Got the double kiss, which is what made it miss. I did see an absolutely incredible double over the weekend from that sort of position, at least for the Reds, from Jake McCartney. He probably shot off the weekend. Absolute stunner. Referee 
Green, hey, this is now an opportunity because when he first came to the table, both color sets were horrible. And now yellows are not too bad. The big question for Ian is a big one. So what's his plan with the eight ball? If he was on the one nearest the bottom left-hand corner pocket, I'd have been tempted to get that out the way because the two yellows at the bottom, one blocks the other. And if he could have got that out of the way and back into the middle of the table, it might have helped. Although he was nicely on that one by the cluster of reds. And if you leave one yellow at the bottom, then you can come down and maybe look at playing some sort of short position on it, on the eight ball, that is. He's had to pull up. Yeah, that's nice. He can easily play two cushions round for the plant. But can you get on the one nearest the pocket? Not quite, but I think he's still got that plant as a, as a second option. Oh, not quite. Wasn't quite straight, slightly offset. Disappointment for Ian Hay. Wide open now for Sean. Should just run through these without too much bother. Yeah, and was expecting Sean to, to be pretty sharp. He's been putting a lot of time in of late. As I mentioned in his interview, he's got a huge challenge game coming up soon. One of the many things on offer for all players are those those cash games, and Sean is playing for a very, very sizable pot, so he's been putting plenty of hours in of late. Be sharp tonight. Just crossing the T's and dotting the I's. I thought he was going to leave one right centre for last ball. It doesn't really matter. But even when they're laid out like that, I still find it fascinating to which way around will the players take the the balls. in the eight ball, one each. Just as a reminder, just in case, draw doesn't eliminate both pairs, but it does mean they can only go through with a four-way six red shoots out. They would need a draw in the other match. In this round of fixtures, and then they both need to win their final game. It's not out of the question, but it is unlikely we've never had a four-way six red shoots out on our Monday night events. Going back soon a bit years now. Karen Wilson on the break. Oh, that's zip central. Still giving him a bit of grief though. Just a bit too much spin on it takes away some of the power, but it's still incredibly powerful. Ball's flying everywhere. We saw the uh, the break of choice for, for Mark Selby this weekend. It was a, was a lovely break, wasn't it? A sort of hard stun. Yeah, it was, it was like the, the most powerful tap break I've ever seen. <laughs> the balls were just flying everywhere and he was tapping the pack. Joe O'Connor preferred a, a cut break. That was incredibly successful for him to the final on the back of his success on it and his break over the weekend. Oh, he's not going to fluke it, is he? No. So here comes a chance. That was a tough one for Chris yeah, because it was. it was a good split even across the table and he didn't have an opener. Yellow on the left-hand side is the trickiest ball to get to. Everything else is very simple. I 
I think I'd get for some value and get rid of the one over the pocket here. Yeah, I would. I'd get rid of that. I'd use the one at the bottom left. Actually, might be my last ball here. Right, it might not be now. Oh, problem! Not the greatest shot Karen Wilson's ever played. Scratch of the head from the warrior. I think he was just trying to come. He wasn't trying to play a small gap there. Just get back up into the middle of the table and have some options. I wonder if you can see the thin edge of this thing. Can you still play the pot here? Might still have a shot. It was thin. Very tough. And what an opening. For Chris Day. Nothing in the way here for Chris to run through these. Anticipating any mistakes from here, but it's been one of those nights really where you can't really take anything for granted. I wasn't expecting any mistakes, but I think he's just created one here. He's got the wrong angle. I don't think any of those three reds together on the right hand side, I think they're all blocking each other. So he's going to have to hit this one well to get above them. Keep going. Yeah, that's okay. Just got there. That was nice. Another few rolls, he might go the other way round. Yeah, played it well. Job done for Chris Day. So 2 1 the gap. Interesting match so far. It really is. Big match as well. Loser is out. Chances missed in that last frame. Interesting that to see Sean come forward wants to make sure how much time is left. Just a slight issue with the clock that's just been fixed. He wants to make sure because they're formulating a plan of how they're going to go about it. He is one of the best at the clock management. If the clearance is on, they'll go for it. They'll make it, but or well, they'll take it on. But if it gets mixy, they'll know the right way to go about it. Are they making it messy or are they making it as tricky as possible for the frame to finish quickly or? Is it important for them to win the frame? It's an interesting amount of time left for that sort of debate. Yeah, it always, as ever, depends on the drop of the balls. Oh, well. Disaster. 
for Chris. Judgment Day. Not like him. Usually got a massive break as Chris. Yeah, had a quick chat with him earlier as well. He said that he'd found something with his break. Been practicing hard over the weekend after the tournament in Blackpool. Once he was out, he was still grinding through on the practice table. He found, oh dear. Out of the way, says no nonsense, Scott Price. Spotted it immediately. Oh, well, yeah. Eight ball moves straight away. Off the left finger. Oh, that's a terrible shot from Sean. It, it really is. That's a very surprising shot. Those yellows were all on. And now they're and they, not. And they had cue ball in hand as well. That, it's incredible that he's played that shot. Well, safety coming up. Unless this was the plan. I mean, I, exactly. I mean, but I can't, when they all go, yeah, that's a strange one. It, 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 it has to be a mistake. That can't have been planned. It's not particularly safe either. Karen floats that one in. Big question for them as to whether they can break into the red at the top left. Karen wants to play it now. Extension called. Yeah, good shot. Is he on it? I think so. Fifteen second shot clock, you don't get too much time to decide. And he was. And they get a little bit of a nudge. That's all right. Not sure that red goes in the centre pocket. Does go in the bottom right hand corner, so this is key. Beautiful. Yeah, oh, that's perfect. Not just the pot, but also the cue ball. Now we can float through the gap. Oh, a big error from Sean Story there. Huge. Very, very not like him. With cue ball in hand, that was... I mean, that's as bad a shot as I've ever seen Sean Story play. It was a strange one. I can't quite work out what happened, to be honest. Cue ball in hand, how does he how does he make that error? To the point where we're questioning whether it was an elaborate tactical plan, but I can't imagine it was. Every ball went, I just don't see the benefit there. I understand it and you know, maybe if there's a minute or two left, but what was that, four and a bit minutes? Probably it was six minutes when the frame started, so it was five minutes left there. It's a long run to the line if that's what you're thinking, and it wasn't that tough to to deal with. Yeah. Here we go. Aaron Wilson. Breaking for a chance to win. 2-2 two, two it sits with three minutes on the watch. Bounced this off that front ball he gets again. It. He's just hitting that break a tip too low. He's bouncing off it with too much spin. Power's there. Power's there, absolutely. It's just that it just you saw with a few people this weekend that when you're not screwing it up that much it does open up better for you doesn't want to move the red and hitting this one wants to wants to nip it out clean oh, that's why he's changing his his plan Played that with a degree of shot to nothing. No, he wouldn't leave much if he missed. Shot tries the spectacular, and it doesn't come off. If that's the case. That was a very clever shot from Kyron Wilson. If it goes in, he's got the one down the rail. Really didn't leave Sean much to go at. It looked exactly as played as well. Quick on 15 seconds a shot. Back double. Ooh, that's not gone to plan. Oh, he's a bit unlucky. It's touching ball. I wonder if he popped the red. I'm not sure the benefit here. 
of that. Just wonder what else he's got. Well, I thought he could still see the yellow in the open, but I suppose if it's touching ball, he can't, because I was expecting him just to take the pot on bottom right. That can't be on. So touching ball means you can play away, and it's essentially a legal shot because you've played the yellow first. He could have potted that red. He elects not to. He's left the red on into the middle. And Sean's got one minute left, and he loves a buzzer beater. He does. Get a go at it. 2-2, two, two, this will now be the last frame. Can Sean Story salvage his and Chris's evening? Double, I think. Not a good angle for the double. Well, Kyron Wilson has 24 seconds to potentially go and win it. And he's just about, I think, got enough time here. Yeah, the last two shots should be stop, stop. 12 seconds left. Get your skates on, Kyron. This for the win. Oh, he jaws it. Would you believe it? Kyron Wilson will have to settle for a draw. Relief for Sean Story and Chris Day because that keeps them in the competition only by the skin of their teeth. Both pairs now must get a draw from the next match on here at the Pairs Cup to stay in the tournament. It's out of their hands.